Well, you're most welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 31st of May. Now, the main thing we're looking at today is it turns out that the National Institutes of Health in the United States and the Wuhan Institute of Virology have both been working on monkeypox. Coincidentally, uh, before the outbreak that we are currently uh, experiencing. So rather strange. Now, we're not going to be talking about the involvement of the NIH in uh, SARS coronavirus 2 and uh, gain of possible gain of function research. We're not going to be talking about the Wuhan Institute of Virology uh, and the fact that it coincidentally is only uh, 14 miles from the wet market where the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, allegedly started. We're not going to be talking about the World Health Organization's frankly embarrassing farcical uh, I, I don't like to use the term investigation into the origins of this virus. We're just going to stick to the facts about monkeypox, not COVID-19, not SARS coronavirus 2. Although you may draw some parallels. Now let's start off by looking at uh, where we are at the moment with uh, monkeypox. So this is monkeypox. Cumulative world cases. Now the cases aren't high. The actual cases will be much higher than the diagnosed cases, of course. So this is only the cases, not the infections. But it is a steep uh, increase in cases, no question about that. And when we look at the countries that are involved here, um, we actually see that there's quite a widespread of countries. And um, the United Kingdom is certainly... Uh, forging ahead, which is a little surprising because the epicenters of this European outbreak seem to be in Spain and uh, Belgium. And yet it's the UK that's got most cases. Is it just that the UK is diagnosing uh, more efficiently than other countries? That, that may transpire in the future. We don't know that. It may or may not be true. But we see the United Kingdom with the highest number of cases. And then we see uh, Spain, Portugal, and going down, we see Germany, Netherlands, sorry, Canada, Netherlands, Germany, France, United States, Italy, Belgium, with small numbers of cases. But we are seeing a widespread of cases throughout the world. And when we look at the map uh, here, just to give us the international context of this, um, we do see the cases are in Europe and North America. Argentina there, I didn't know, know about Argentina, Australia, a small number. But uh, actually, Nigeria, um, where this is uh, endemic, and uh, that's Congo there, I'm pretty sure that's Congo. Yeah, that's Congo there, I'm pretty sure. Um, no cases uh, identified. Uh, no, not, not because there aren't any, but because they haven't been, um, they haven't been diagnosed there. There, there. there will be some there, because there always are, uh, to some extent, uh, cases there. Now, let's move on to what we know. Now, the first report comes from this, from the National Institutes of Health. Um, so um, this is about uh, a randomised placebo-controlled trial on the safety and efficacy of uh, tecovirimat and antiviral treatment for the treatment of patients with monkeypox. So good that the National Institute of Health uh, is uh, researching this and seem to have anticipated the possibility of this current outbreak of monkeypox. Um, now, let's look at this in a little detail. So th that's the Our World, Our World in Data, which is now starting to track this. Um, now, the uh, Monkeypox Treatment Research Project, total funding is the best part of $10 million. That's a lot of money. The funding supports a clinical trial to identify effective treatment for monkeypox, well-anticipated NIH. Uh, it's a re-emerging pathogen, that's true. Uh, it's a disease of uh, endemic potential. Now, this is true and concerning. Now, what concerns me at mon about monkeypox at the moment is not so much that there's a few cases, although that is concerning, of course, but that this could get into animals. It could get into cats, hamsters, rodents, mice, rats, squirrels in Europe, in the United Kingdom, in Europe, and become endemic. That means we would have repeated, okay, maybe small outbreaks, but repeated outbreaks basically indefinitely. It could become endemic here in Europe and the United States as it is in Africa. This is perhaps the, the main concern. And, and the other thing that is concerning is that this is in the same group of diseases as smallpox. Now, I'm not comparing it with smallpox. It's not as contagious. It's not as deadly. It's not as pathogenic. 
but it is in the same group of uh, viruses as smallpox. Um, this is all from the National Institutes of Health. It can cause significant morbidity and can result in death. Talking about smallpox, that's straight from the NIH. Human cases have been increasing in sub-Saharan Africa since 2000. Sporadic outbreaks outside of Africa have, have occurred. And the similarity, the similarity between the monkeypox virus and the variola virus, which of course is the virus that causes smallpox, still from the National Institutes of Health. Uh, they say, coupled with concerns about the potential of the variola smallpox virus as a potential bioterrorism target. So perhaps the NIH anticipated this outbreak. Uh, perhaps they anticipated the possibility that uh, smallpox could once again be used as a biological, not once again, but be used as a biological warfare agent. Well, you actually could say used again because it has been used as a, as a biological warfare agent uh, in the past, uh, albeit at the level of spreading uh, plague blanket blankets to uh, indigenous peoples in America, or catapulting corpses into besieged cities in the past. Um, but this potential for bioterrorism now, of course, is much more sophisticated. Um, so have placed monkeypox treatment at the forefront of public health and science research agenda in many countries. So if they could find a good cure for monkeypox, the idea is that that would work for smallpox as well, which is a good thing to do. So that looks like the National Institutes of Health have been working on that actually for some time. This research project is running from uh, the 20th of September, 20th of September 2020 uh, through to the 27th of September 2025. So we don't expect results on that at any time soon, but it, interesting. Now, this next bit is an article from here. And uh, I kidding you not, this is the Institute, this is from the Institute of Virology in Wuhan. This is where this research on monkeypox is being carried out. So let's look at this, uh, let's look at this in a little more detail. Now this is an article in uh, Virologica Sinica, which we'll look at uh, in a minute. That's the article there. There it is. Download the PDF. It is a full uh, peer-reviewed article in this uh, official Chinese um, publication. Now, let's look at what they're doing. What, what they're doing basically is they are working, and this was published in February 2022. So the Wuhan Institute of Virology is working on a test to test for the presence of monkeypox. And I think we could assume they're interested in tests for smallpox as well. Bearing in mind this is a potential biological warfare agent. If you're already starting to feel uncomfortable, join the club. I'm actually very uncomfortable uh, about what I'm about to tell you. So that's the name of the paper there. Efficiency of a large-scale fragment of monkeypox virus. So basically what they're doing is they make a section of monkeypox virus. Uh, and they want to use that as a quantitative polymerase chain reaction template. Uh, and they're going to use this way to put it together into, into a yeast. Now, a direct quote from this paper. Since monkeypox infection has never been associated with an outbreak in China, the viral genome material required for PCR detection is unavailable. So the Chinese authorities, it would appear, are incapable of getting hold of um, monkeypox virus. So they have to basically make their own using synthetic uh, techniques or make a part of the viral genome themselves using synthetic uh, techniques. So the monkeypox virus is available readily in labs in Nigeria, Congo, the United Kingdom, um, presumably now in the United States, several places in Europe, and the virus is available from anyone who has symptomatic monkeypox. Anyone who's got a pustule with monkeypox, just take a scraping and there you've got the virus. 
So the idea that the Chinese authorities can't get a sample of the actual virus and have to synthesize their own, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. All they need to do is send some people to Nigeria, slip the Nigerians a few dollars, and I'm sure they'd come back with a vial of monkeypox uh, virus. But apparently they can't do that. Why on earth would they publish that? It is so obviously uh, incredulous, uh, say, saying that it's not available in China, so they've got to make their own. Don't buy it. Do not buy that at all. You can make your own mind up, of course, but I'm giving that a red cross. I'm not buying that one, I'm afraid. It's available. The virus is available, especially to somewhere like the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So anyway, because it's not available, they're forced to make their own poor things using viral DNA recombinations. And this technique here, transform dissociated recombination, where they put the uh, part of the viral genome together to assemble large DNA constructs. So they're actually assembling. So obviously they know the, they know the um, gene sequence in the monkeypox virus. So they are synthesizing that basically from scratch, basically from scratch, putting the, uh, the DNA bases together and then they put it into a yeast to multiply it up so you can make any amount of it and then you can use that yeast to test the, the veracity of your uh, Q uh, quantitative preliminaries chain reaction tests for monkeypox. That is what they are uh, suggesting here. And they're made of 55,000, uh, so 55,000, uh, 55 kilobyte, 55,000 uh, bits of the um, monkeypox viral genome. And then they put it into this. Now this VL648B is a standard available commercially available yeast cells so basically it means you can brew it up like beer once it's in yeast cells once you've got yeast cells you just basically put them in water with a bit of sugar and they'll brew up as many as you want basically that's that's the case um, so you can make up huge amounts of it now um, what is virologica sinica uh, here it is now this is the information about that it, it is readily available um, and i'll tell you a little bit about what it is from this website it's the official journal of the chinese uh, society of microbiology and it will serve as a platform for the communication and exchange of academic information and ideas in an international context sounds pretty good uh, now let me just show you something here th 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 this is um this is direct from this paper because this is the bit that's really quite chilling um here it is this is this work was carried out and <laughs> just in case you think I'm making this up at the Wuhan Institute of Virology um, th this is one of the reasons that it's so uncomfortable wh what I'm uh, telling you stroke terrifying discussion section of this paper so actually in this paper itself it says this however this DNA assembly tool putting together the viral DNA. Remember, this is the instruction to make the viral proteins, the monkeypox. And by the way, if you could make a monkeypox virus, I'm sure you can make any other viruses you want. For example, um, we'll just think of a random one, smallpox. Um, but smallpox is, is, is already saved already. We know that the original strains of smallpox are, are, are saved already. But whether they're saved already or not really doesn't matter anymore because they can now be synthesized. Because the genome is known, uh, the, virus, the whole virus could be synthesized. Not saying they're synthesizing the whole smallpox virus, just saying it could be done. And that doesn't apply just to China anyway. That applies to everywhere that does virological research. Right. <clears throat> they say this DNA assembly tool applied in virological research could raise a potential um, could I'm going to start using a red pen here this is pretty alarming stuff really could also raise potential security concerns well imagine that I should sort of think it could especially when the assembled product contains a full set of genetic material that can be recovered into a contagious pathogen so the genetic material can be taken from the yeast, put back into a virus, <clears throat> a contagious pathogen. Uh, recently, a group of scientists was funded by a biotech.
tech company to synthesize a full length horse pox virus genome and recover and recovered it into an infectious virus so this has been done in other words it can be reverse engineered <coughs> can be reversed engineered from the yeast back into an infectious virus now i've left all the hyperlinks here so you click on these in the descriptions it'll take you straight to them um not surprisingly, such a controversial treatment has received enormous attention and raised global uh, global debate on its biosecurity implications. Again, hyperlinks there. So it seems the Wuhan Institute of Virology is very aware of these risks and is talking about it. Of course, this paper has been approved by the Wuhan Institute of Virology which, as we've seen, is not open to international um, visitation, shall we, shall we say, uh, let alone international uh, scrutiny. Again, not just the Chinese situation. This would be the same in Port and Down. It would be the same in the, the American uh, facilities where potential military threats are addressed. Um, but... Some might say that the Wuhan Institute of Virology has been leaky in the past. We have no definitive proof of that, but that has been suggested. But um, fortunately, the Wuhan Institute of Virology go on to say, in this study, a lower full length viral genome would be ideal reference template. So it would be much better if they could make the whole thing. Um, we only sought to assemble a 55 uh, kilobyte viral fragment, less than one third of the whole monkeypox genome so in this publication what they are saying in this publication is they've only synthesized one third of the genome if they have synthesized the other two thirds of the genome they're not writing about it here and of course we've no reason to suspect that because it's not written here they've only synthesized a third of it It would have been better to synthesize the full thing, but because they're responsible and being careful, they, they haven't done that. At least they haven't written about that in this publication. Uh, this assembly product is fail safe by virtually eliminating any risk of recovery into infectious virus uh, while promoting a multiple target. So basically they can use this for testing, but it's perfectly safe because it's only a third of the virus. Therefore, you can't recover the whole viral genome. Of course, um, it would, would also mean that any uh, less ethical viral constructor in other parts of the world would only have to bother constructing two-thirds of the virus rather than the whole thing. Um, there you go. I think I've made my concerns about that clear. Um, and more references there. Now, um, just to quickly recap, uh, this seemed to have come from Nigeria, this strain. It seemed to arise in uh, male homosexual events in Spain and Belgium. Um, gay events in Spain and uh, Belgium and spread from there. But the UK seems to have got um, the most number of cases. So that doesn't quite add up. Maybe there's something we don't quite know there yet. But this is spreading in, in male homosexual communities. Um, now, I don't see any particular reason why that should be so. I, I suspect close proximity in uh, heterosexual uh, sexual activity or not even heterosexual activity, just any close amorous activity would be sufficient to, to uh, spread the virus. Um, I suspect that the fact that it's spreading in the uh, male homosexual communities in Europe is, is a founder effect. It's just where it got to first. And of course, it can spread to uh, other people, uh, certainly because it's a transmissible disease. Um, unless there's more to come on that, there may well be more to come on that. But in the UK at the moment, last 24 hours, another 11 cases, now got 190. Uh, we've ordered 20,000 additional doses of smallpox vaccine. Note a smallpox vaccine, not a monkeypox vaccine, a smallpox vaccine. Uh, offered to close contacts of those diagnosed with monkeypox to reduce the risk of symptomatic infection and severe illness. So the smallpox vaccine offering protection against monkeypox. Just the same as back in the 1790s, Edward Jenner's cowpox pus from Sarah Nelms, the cowpox that he took the pus from, 
protected James Phipps, uh, the young boy who he uh, inoculated with cowpox to protect against smallpox. So in the same way now, the smallpox vaccine is giving this cross immunity to protect against uh, monkeypox. Uh, Dr. Rosalind Lewis, WHO expert, it's very important to describe this because it appears an increasing mode of transmission that has uh, been un unrecognised. She's talking there about uh, spread in, uh, in the sexual context, particularly in uh, male homosexuality context at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, it would be unfortunate, she says, if monkeypox were to exploit the immunity gap. Strange term. I'm not quite sure how scientific that is left by smallpox 40 years ago. So it's as if there's kind of an ecological... It seems to be saying that she's saying that there's kind of an ecological niche, a place to live, that smallpox used to live. But a similar virus could kind of take over that niche, which is a bit strange, really, because smallpox has been um, eradicated, eliminated. So... Don't quite know what her thinking is there. I'm not quite sure how scientific that is. It's as if each disease has got its own little niche, and if you take that away, another disease will come along to fill it. I'm not sure there's too much scientific evidence for that. Um, but anyway, that's what she's saying. Uh, that, anyway, I agree with her. That would indeed be unfortunate. This is not a disease we want to become endemic. Uh, and she says there's still a window to close the outbreak. Uh, let's hope that before it get that's that happens before it gets into animal reservoirs, because if it gets into animal reservoirs, it's going to be very hard to get out of animal reservoirs. So there you go. National Institutes of Health and Wuhan Institute of Virology both seem to have uncannily anticipated this. Um, make of that what you uh, will. Thank you for watching.